Hello peeps, excuse the poor quality video. Uh, right, so the bumper off on the C-Class. This is the factory intercooler. What we're going to do is we're going to remove it and then offer up the other intercooler and um, see what the fitment is like. Okay, so here we have the old intercooler on the top and the bigger intercooler on the bottom. <coughs> now initially it will seem like the old one is bigger, however this one has an additional row and is thicker by about 6 or 10 mil. Um, additionally, this one's obviously full of oil from being on the car for so long. We will be changing the PCV valve on this when we're doing the oil cooler because it's, there's more intake uh, oil, there's more oil in the intake system than I would have hoped or would like to see. So we'll change that anyway just to prevent that in the future. We'll look at tools. Um, so we're going to drill and tap the water methanol. I have checked, the flow is this way. So we're going to drill and tap that and then we're going to offer it up um, to the car. Oh, that's where it is. And see how it fits. It looks like it's pretty good, really. Um, we're going to need to make a little bracketry, etc., for it to go on, but that's uh, straightforward. Okay, here we are, mocked up with some brackets and just a bit of steel bracketry plating that's been bent and drilled. And they are actually screwed in at the top. I think that will be enough support. We're going to drill and tap the crash bar, um, but we'll have a look. Uh, here's the alignment of the boost pipes. I mean, look, it's nearly close. The only thing is I might need to do some some conflagration, that's the technical term, to get this gap closer. There's clearly a leak there. Um, <coughs> and we'll have to put some sort of ducting in place. This is the old ducting from the old intercooler. You can see all these little bits of rubber on the bottom. Um, they make a big difference to the airflow, otherwise the air hits the intercooler and goes around the outside because it's the path of least resistance. Um, you don't want that. We want to go through the intercooler. Um, just whilst I'm here as well, this is the slight leak mentioned on the MOT. Um, it's not slight, is it? That's, that's a big leak. Uh, so we'll deal with that as well. But anyway, so I'm going to... Uh, I haven't drilled and tapped the thing. Something to note, I've put the caps back on. Um, we're doing water methanol injection. We don't want to be doing aluminium pieces injection. Um, the engine will run very well for 10 minutes and then it will not run ever again. Ha ha ha. So, um, ah, something to note, excuse the movie around you. Um, I ground off the nubbins on the thing and they're filled with rubber. So uh, by grinding them off, it shouldn't affect the seal of the boost of the of the silicon hoses that are going on there. So I will be grinding off the, the nubbins on the boost hoses that are on the car here um, and then clamping onto there. So that'll be interesting. So yeah. Right, we've got the brackets on, drilled, measured, everything. We've got the tap for the nozzle. We've got the nozzle installed and the um, nozzle holder. That is, this is the back side of the intercooler that faces the radiator, so that will be in a position where we can swap it out relatively easily just by dropping the front of the tray if we need to. It's got a four gallon per hour nozzle. <clears throat> Obviously we'll log the intake temperatures before and after with the system switched on and off and see if that's something that we need to tweak, etc. So now we're just going to pop it on the car. Okay, we are hooked up. We're going to have to probably test fit the bumper three or four times and do some trimming. Um, all the hoses are clamped up. This worked particularly well. I mean, time will tell to see how <coughs> how long they last. I might relocate that clamp, actually. Um, and if they pop off, a bit concerned about the size of these, but you can't get T-clamps on the end of these intercooler. Um, same on this side, works quite well. If you can see the nozzle, just there. <coughs> so from underneath, really easy to change. Got loads of space under there for airflow as well. Uh, we're gonna try and do something with this dam. Um, see what happens. Got to put the bumper on and then we can sh come back to me. Bumper back on, right, bumper back on. You can just about see it in there. We need to fill these gaps in here. Uh, I don't know if you can see, there's a big void there. Air will just go in there instead of whoosh, through the intercooler. Um, it's pretty tight in there, but we managed to get all the original stuff. I had to trim a little bit of the front lower air dam that went over that uh, leaky bit of the AC compressor. But uh, yeah, right. What we'll do now is I will pop it all back together, all the arch liners and everything, and let's have a look to see what the ambient temperature is outside, because if it's uh, similar to yesterday, we might be able to do some data logging. 
Okay, right, good news in that the ambient temperature outside today was 15 degrees, and on the first run it was 14 degrees, 14 and a half, so close enough to be basically the same. Um, here is our data log. Something to note, uh, we, you know, I've gone through the layout in the previous video, something to note, our starting temperature is 18 degrees Celsius with an ambient temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. On the previous intercooler, our starting temperature was 26 or 27 degrees Celsius with an ambient temperature of basically the same. So already we're starting with a lower ambient temperature. Now the test cycle that we do for this run is identical in both cases. As You, know, um, you can see from the data log as well that it had reached a stable temperature. Um, we, did our, we started our run here. We ended our run here. And we went from... 18 to 38. So we've got a rise of 20 degrees compared to 27 on the old intercooler. So um, it's much better uh, than the old intercooler just from that perspective. But also, you can't tell because I accelerated again here, but the recovery time is quicker as well. Um, so as I've looked through further on the data log, so that's really good news. We've got better um, intake air temperatures. Um, this is without the water methanol system turned on. I haven't plumbed in or piped up or done any of the pump or any electrics or for that. This is just intercooler to intercooler comparison. So happy days. Um, there's two little bits of trim on each corner that uh, I need to sort of put in to funnel the air through the intercooler. So that will increase the... Uh, effectiveness of the intercooler even more so that's good um, I'm going to put up a picture hello sorry for the impromptu uh, weird video thing but um, I haven't got the camera out so you'll have to do with this um, yeah so the results on that are really good um, I'll put a picture up here shortly um, of what the car looks like now with the bumper etc back on. It's really hidden in there, you can't really tell that it's there, which is great. Um, still retaining that sleeper look. Um, next up, I've had a notification to say that the turbo is on its way. So, as you can see on the video, the amount of oil coming out of it means we need to do the oil cooler. So, instead of the turbo swap being a two or three hour job, it is going to be a 10 hour job because I'm going to change the oil cooler at the same time. So there'll probably be another week or so before um, more data, although what I probably will do is do a before dyno run just so we can get power output of the stock car with the new intercooler. Um, and so we've got a baseline before we do any major mods really and then see what it looks like after. So stay tuned. Thank you.